welcome to this week's episode of ECCB Connects. As we continue to celebrate the life and work of former Governor the Honorable Sir K. Dwight Venner, we bring you excerpts of the tributes from his funeral service. Sir Dwight was a man who I can say was a champion of the small states. I will always remember forever his words, his action at every international meeting defending the states of the OECS country and as a result of it, small states around the world. Sir Dwight always challenged us to be the best, long before being the best was the norm. Who can forget those annual speeches by Sir Dwight? Speeches in which he gave us the remedies to our problems. Speeches that we accepted because Sir Dwight had proven in his days as Director of Finance and Planning that he actually lived those words. The same things that he was calling on the leaders to do today are things that he himself had actually pioneered. Personally, the main attribute that I remember of Sir Dwight is that when I was an economist and then became Director of Tourism, eventually becoming the Minister of Tourism, and most recently being so lucky to be made the Prime Minister of this country, my conversations and the amount of time that Sir Dwight gave me never changed. Sir Dwight always spoke to me in very clear words. Sir Dwight never looked down at anyone. Sir Dwight always felt that there was more that he could learn from everyone. Today, we honor and celebrate the life of Sir Dwight. I dare say, however, that we can truly honor Sir Dwight by studying his writings and implementing his ideas to support each other and to create a Caribbean brand and a financial sector we can all be proud of. A quote from Sir Dwight speaking about regional integration when he said, we are confident that this is the correct path to proceed on and that with the political will of our governments, the innovativeness of our private sector and the societal consensus of our people across the OECS, we will succeed. But we must remember that success comes before work only in a dictionary. Pure Sir Dwight. Dwight's handiwork can be found in innumerable regional ventures. He was the modernizer of the central bank, the creative genius behind the establishment of supportive financial institutions to the central bank, the monetary and banking systems. He was one of the principal authors of the revised establishing the OECS Economic Union. He was the draftsperson of the eight-point growth and stabilization plan for the currency union in the aftermath of the global economic meltdown of 2008 and continuing. And he was, very importantly, the authoritative balm of Gilead to provide calm when some political leaders were in danger of veering off the rails particularly in the post-2008 economic storms. Dwight's overall contribution to the regional economies and our people has been huge and truly inestimable. Dwight was a Caribbean man to the core. He was nationalist and anti-imperialist. He knew instinctively that we were not better than anyone. But nobody anywhere was better than us. He was, supremely, he was a supreme pragmatist. But his pragmatism rested on the tried and tested values of our Caribbean civilization. He knew that though the shortest distance geometrically between two points was a straight line, he recognized that you couldn't climb Sofri Mountain 
by way of a straight line, you have to take some zigs, you have to take some zags in order to get to the mountain top. He compromised without being compromising. He knew that in order to make a whole son and a whole daughter out of the compromises which we are, he had to ask his mother and his father and the folk. And to do so, he had to come home, go to himself and to our countries. So K, K. Dwight Vedder's greatness would no doubt be recognized in memorials of marble or stone by a grateful people whom he served faithfully and well. But he will undoubtedly be better remembered in our hearts and minds and in those glorious pages of our history reserved for our titans. We thank Almighty God for his gift of Dwight to us. I say farewell to my friend and comrade who sought always to make living better for our people, to uplift our people's way of life, culture, and civilization, to assist in shaping our economic and financial systems, to serve all our people, and to remind us of the necessity and desirability of unity and regional integration in this, our turbulent world. It has been my privilege to have been an eyewitness and air witness to Dwight's remarkable endeavors, to have heard his laughter and heeded his advice, to have seen and experienced the mysterious twinkle in this Rasta man's eyes and his vibrations, and to have known this majestic Caribbean Viking who have left us for Beulah land. From his humble beginnings in Backstreet, Kingstown, he watched how the Jacobs family quietly made their mark in their community. They were not well off, but he saw them help their neighbors wherever and whenever they could, giving a bit of sugar or soap hair, writing a letter there, lending an air, and offering a kind word, or several, if you knew my grandma, Sissy Venner. More than once, he spoke of the sacrifice of his auntie Kay, an extremely bright girl who had had to leave school at the age of 14 to support her family after the death of her own father. Whenever he spoke about her sacrifice, it was with an awe and appreciation, which was truly touching because I knew he was exactly the same way. In good times and in bad, his family could always count on his unwavering support. When there was cause for celebration, you felt even more uplifted by how genuinely pleased he was for you which you could tell when you saw that smile or heard that unmistakable laugh. Those were both on full display when he warmly welcomed new children into the family through marriage, and later on when he was enjoying the company of his grandchildren, whom he adored. And when you went to him with a problem, he would listen attentively as you explained what was on your mind. While you spoke, you could see his own mind working away, contemplating your options. And then when you were finished, he laid out his thoughts point by point by point, making sure you were following the thread and asked you what you thought. So by the end of the conversation, you already felt like you had a game plan. And to assist you with that plan, he gave everything he could give. You would not feel more supported than if you had Muhammad Ali fighting in your corner. In the same way he was there for us at home, he supported his Caribbean family from beginning to end. One of the lessons we learned growing up was how to share. When it came to Daddy and his work, we had no choice, but it never even crossed our minds to complain because we understood that what he was doing was too important. We could tell because of how passionate, dedicated, and determined he was, and of how tirelessly he worked. Whenever he was away, Daddy called home every single day. In the few instances he didn't, we knew it was because he couldn't, and then we worried how on earth he was going to cope. Over all those years, he always knew how we were doing, what we were doing, where we were going, and when we were going, whether we liked it or not. And as we grew older and dispersed to different corners of the world, he refused to let the distance get the better of us. No way. He set himself up with email, FaceTime, and most recently, WhatsApp. Even his emoji game was strong, although he didn't know that's what they were called. So despite the distance, he was always there for us, and we were extremely close. 
For this, he never hesitated to give due credit to mommy. It's funny that the two of them have early memories of each other with their heads buried in a book, pretending to ignore each other. I'm glad that they ultimately decided not to ignore each other over 50 years. A partnership full of laughter and tears, sacrifice and celebration, lots of children and now grandchildren, and above all, love. He knew and always said that he would not have been able to achieve all he did without my mother's support. Even now, her incredible strength and love continue to carry us all through, and we feel so lucky to have been blessed with such amazing parents. Over the years, my father was busy filling a gift list that we never even had to ask for. He taught us through his example to be curious, be passionate, be open-minded, work hard, listen, lend a hand when and where you can, be generous with your talent and your time, love and support those around you, and most importantly, give thanks for what you have. He let us know every day that he was grateful for our love. Just last month, he was telling me another one of his stories. Someone had asked him what he believed was his greatest achievement, to which he had replied without hesitation, my family. Apparently, his interlocutor had been surprised, but to him, it was crystal clear. And as he was telling me this, he was actually beaming, his smile stretching from ear to ear. He was never shy about saying such things. We knew how deeply he loved us because he told us over and over again would never even let us begin to forget. And because he did it so freely and wholeheartedly, what else could we do but reciprocate? And even though, now, even though now our old friend distance is at it again, this time in another shape and form, he has already made sure that it cannot win. He lives too deeply in our hearts, and we look forward to when we will meet again. In the meantime, we too feel gratitude that we were so blessed to know him and love him and be loved by him and that he was able to live such a full, wonderful life. He faced it all and he stood tall and he truly did it his way. We love you very much, Daddy. In his seven decades, Sir Dwight has set standards that few men can ever hope to achieve. In doing so, he has paved the way and set the stage for the work that we need to do as a family, as a country, as a region, and as a generation. Today, we not only salute Sir Dwight, but we accept with humility the baton of excellence and the responsibility that he has passed to each of us. We commit ourselves and our children to the work of regional integration that his life personified, because he has given us the tools with which to succeed. He had an abiding faith in our capacity as a people, and he continued to believe that we could. Through his relentless efforts, we started to believe our dreams, and we started to realize our potential. We have come to be inspired by his leadership. We remain guided by his thoughtfulness, and we will continue to be encouraged by his love. Throughout his life, Sir Dwight watched over this region. Today, I feel certain that he looks down upon us. And Dad, as you look down, we pray you forgive our tears, because through our reflections on your passing, we have been confronted with a recognition of our immense loss. And as we sought solace from this pain, we have discovered a sacredness in these tears. We have found that they are not the mark of weakness, but of power. We have found that they speak more eloquently than 10,000 tongues, as they are messengers of our overwhelming grief and conveyors of our unspeakable love. As we seek to accept your transition, we collectively pray you God's eternal peace. And as we know, like you recited before entering your library each morning, that it is only through dying that we are reborn to eternal life. Rest in eternal peace, dear patriarch. We have loved you, we love you, and we will continue to love you. We will forever be grateful for the role you played in our lives. May God's eternal light shine down upon you, and as you ascend to the throne to hear him whisper, well done, well done, may the peace of his warm embrace provide you comfort in heaven. Farewell, Sir Kenneth Dwight Venner, our father, our exemplar, our knight, and our light. You shall always live in our heart forever. Dwight, always a Christian, but converted in his adult life by Cardinal then Archbishop 
Kelvin Felix to Roman Catholicism has always been a devout, God-fearing, and abiding of, of both God's and Caesar's laws, and was an even stricter adherent to the principles and practices of the faith than even his Roman Catholic friends and even the religious who were born and brought up in it. All this came from his own strong beliefs and deep convictions and the prayerful support of his dear wife and such in-laws as Macrina, Welcome, Kay, Victor, and even Richardson. He participated in the church rituals and regularly received the sacraments up to his last breathing moment when he received three of the seven sacraments of the church. Man proposes and God disposes. Dwight as a true Christian was always prepared for the inevitability of death and its probable suddenness, but he, nor many, if any, expected it to consume him or for him to make the transition at this time. His, he certainly had a strong bucket list to come, but he would be the first to admit that God's wisdoms and deeds are infinitely beneficial but we mortals with our short-term aspiration and vision do not appreciate them. But there is good news. Already as he would, he has stepped into the communication technology of the great beyond to inform his family that he's okay and to reassure them that everything will be all right for them. I fervently believe that wherever he is and whenever he can, he will guide and preside over his family and his causes with the same devotion and diligence that he did during his lifetime. Kenneth, Dwight, Benson, Venner, my friend, rest in perfect peace. Rest in the perfect peace that you deserve and let us, the living, use the goodness of his life to set an example, to encourage and to, to inspire us as we fulfill God's purpose for all. That's it for this week's episode of ECCV Connects. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page. Join us again next week for another program.